Adam Bomb Baby. Uh, I thought about it and I just can't get it out of my head. Question for today's episode is top five wrestlers in WWE at the moment. Yeah, Bastian Booger, so he teabags Luke Bushwacker, but instead of going for the pin, he goes for a banana that Bastian was holding. That's nice. That's And then the Black Knight, who is played by Jeff Gaylord. We're just going to leave Jeff Gaylord that name to sink in. Ah, uh, cat. Welcome back to the Give Me All Yeah Wrestling Podcast. Before we start this, Anthony did the introduction and I told him to go away because... I do the he's, introduction. He's not as good as me at doing the introduction. <laughs> I was going to do an RVD thing, but I don't good have enough initials. I don't have enough initials. Welcome to the podcast. Yes. My Welcome. name is Anne and this is... What's my name? Dom. Dom. I'm Dom, Survivor Series 1993. November the 24th, 1993 to be precise, Boston. in Boston, Boston Garden, Massachusetts. Right. Boston. Uh, what was the UK number ba- one at ba- the time? Home away from home. Let's take you back. Let's take you back in a time machine to 1993, where the UK number one was and had been for a long time, Meatloaf. I'd do anything for love. Jeepers creepers. Yeah. Do you want to sing a bit? I do anything for love. Very good. But I won't do you. <laughs> I can't wait to get into the 90s so that you can sing a bit more boy bands. And the film, the UK number one film at the time was Aladdin. The well, little fact. The Disney one. Yeah, I've the got, Disney I've got one. Hair in me, me, me mouth. Congratulations. Nice. Cool. It's nothing. It's nothing to do. I've not been. I've not been touching him. Although he does I've smell got a lot of hair. He does smell nice for once today. Nice. We had a shower for this podcast, ladies and germs. I've made an effort today yes. as, a, as, a, yes. as a surprise yeah. for everyone. Yes, indeed. So the thumbnail for this pay per view on the network has an image of the Steiners, Lex Luger, and Tatanka all sat around a turkey. Uh, in the pay per view, yeah, though, pretty funny. It's weird, yeah. right, isn't it? This whole thing's kind of weird, yeah. Thanksgiving! Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah in the pay-per-view, Tatanka's been storyline injured and has been replaced by The Undertaker, but we'll get to that Indeed, a little with, bit. His, with his fantastic jacket. The cape man, with the, the, the original American yeah. bad bum, as we're, we're going to have to refer oh, yeah. to him. Because <laughs> YouTube doesn't like us saying the another American word. Bad bum. Yeah, Anthony's been painstakingly editing out my, uh, my, my, my naughty references to bum. <laughs> um, because, because we keep forgetting that Apparently YouTube doesn't it's a like, bad word. Doesn't like bottom mm. as, a, as a word or the alternative. Um, the pay per view starts off with a message. <laughs> I'm going to sneeze. Sneeze that way. Not into the microphone. <laughs> that was straight into the microphone. Welcome if you're wearing earphones to the podcast. Um, the pay per view starts off with a message from I Lex Luger it. and his family offering a Thanksgiving message to everyone out there in front of a fireplace. Really corny. Luger's wearing this horrific jumper, which is like purple with yeah. flowers on. Yeah, man. Yeah. And it, it really does. It looks it's, like something an old awkward. lady should it, wear. It's awkward. I mean, L- Luger just. The whole thing, man. The whole Lex <laughs> Luger thing. Was just a bad let's Luger. push that man as it's an like, American. It's, yeah, it's like it's like it's like you know the, the that that age equivalent of Roman Reigns, I think. Except no, I don't know. Roman Reigns has a bit more charisma. Like, <laughs> no, I, I think, think Luger had more. No, charisma. honestly, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm should, not uh, doing the that next that. time we the next time we do a two K T match, I'm going to do Luger versus Reigns. And, oh uh, no, that would be a yeah, poor yeah, match. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we get uh, the Star Angle banger. The start the Star Star Angle banger. Yeah, start ba- banger. Like a sausage. That's what us English or a, folks or a, or a call mega, a sausage or a, a mega banger. Tune. A mega, mega tune. tune. Oh, a mega tune, yeah. So Star Sangled, Spangled Banger would be a mega anthem. Like, um, I Want to Rock. rock. I Want to Rock. Boom. Bow, bow, bow. You can't get much more American or banging than that. Ah, Twisted System and Rock. Yeah. Love Twisted System. Didn't you interview Twisted System once? Didn't I what? Sorry, I interviewed Twisted System once, but yes. For the magazine. I did, yeah. Uh, the guitarist, I forget his name. Oh, but yeah, go. yes, there you go. It was it was a, it was a good interview. On, I, I learned his name on Soundsphere magazine. Soundsphere magazine, check it out, there Dom's you. magazine. Uh, so yeah, oh, and this is this was interesting. So this is the first time we're sort of seeing this in this capacity. There was a three D rendered image of this whole Survivor Series thing where it was sort of going through like a building site. I mean, it was really basic. Yeah, but, it but cool. that's it's how. Like- 
it's interesting to see how like we're moving forward yeah. into that time where they'd regularly use yeah, their new paper. It was like it was like it was building the thing. It almost reminded me of you know when they did the two K eighteen ad, you know the the kind of building and all yes. that. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, that yeah, kind of that kind yeah, of vibe. Yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. I knew I yeah. recognised it from somewhere. No, it was cool. Man. They probably was... they probably raided the archives and like we could do that again. Yeah, we could. There, there was a, there was a couple of bits which was like. Um, in this pay per view, where you can see that technology is moving forward, the yeah. lighting's got slightly better. They're using that sort of neon sign that they'd use at Raw, which is great. It's a good time, man. I mean, it's, this is it's, the, it's this moving forward up to man. the attitude era. It's an, I mean, this is an awful year, and we'll sort of well, uh, we'll what we'll do is we'll the, do the, the, an the, overview of this year at the end of the podcast. There's one incredible thing that happens, uh, which obviously everyone knows in wrestling history that, that is triggered here, which is Owen Hart's. Amazing heel turn. Yes, that's the very. This but is it's the, in a really yeah, poor way. This is the very, very, very early scenes. introduction of it. Yeah, uh, and it's one of the greatest. Can you imagine? I think we should. I think we should take a moment. Can you imagine what Owen Hart could? He probably still. I don't know. He'd still be wrestling, but he'd still be in a. You know, I mean, he's, he was incredible, incredible. man. And, uh, We've and done this before. We've talked about this before. Just one of those sad. You know, he's another character I'd love to see. Imagine how popular he would be if he was on a game and people could play him. Absolutely. He, but in terms of like what you're sort of saying about him, what else he would have achieved? Yeah. It's a bit of. It's a really difficult one because with people that landscape. pass away, oh, how can you? Yeah. How can well, yeah, you? Exactly. I mean, look at. Who's who's run? What if Hulk Hogan had never gone away? You know how would wrestling? Because that would have changed the whole landscape of wrestling, possibly. Yeah, and this is a bit of a I mean, rough death, thing to say. Possibly more so than Owen Owen dying. You know, death things. Death things are interesting. The only other guy I would say would have had a similar impact or could have done, could have, should have, would have. I have not. I have no feelings like this about any other. All, all due respect to wrestlers past and present is uh, Brian Pillman. Yeah, well, he was a talent as but well. Yeah, but Owen, same as Owen. Like, I don't yeah. have the same enthusiasm. I don't have the same enthusiasm about people that are currently existing and what they could have should have done because they went on. Then they went on and they formed their own careers. Hulk Hogan was incredibly yeah. successful in WCW, but but Owen Hart, you'd always wonder, holy monkey, what would he have done? Yeah, but you know? Dynamite Kid had he stayed around in WWE? True, longer, agreed, you there know, you go. What, what would he there have achieved? Anyway, um, yeah. and then if you look at modern day wrestlers, you know, if if you was to, and I'm not saying death, but if you was to take one of the big sort of stars out. Um, what impact that would have, and it would have a massive impact. Yeah. You know, you take away Seth Rollins, and Raw's suddenly a lot weaker. You know, or, or 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 Brock Lesnar, even. You know, I hate Brock Lesnar, but you take him out, and mm. suddenly the whole landscape changes. Yeah. Um, and actually, a lot of the time that this happens is when WWF end up doing the best sort of stuff because they end mm. up like thinking on the feet. Really. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure on this on this one. There was a lot of. Uh... A lot of people replacing other people. Well, so the Michael's steroid Laura, trials yeah. going on, you know. Law so had, so had a really, really awkward time. Where yeah, man, we'll talk about that yeah, when yeah, we get to yeah. it. But yeah, no, Lawler's not in this pay per view, and they'd been building up this massive yeah. Bret Hart thing, and suddenly that was taken <laughs> and they, away. And they were still, they were still the knights on Michael's team because of the because uh, of the costumes. <laughs> the what? Sorry, they were still the knights. They were still. Oh yeah, they're the still the knights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then the commentators for this is Vince McMahon and Bobby Heenan with Jim Ross and Gorilla being. Put onto relegated, Indeed. should we say, so to Radio yeah, WWF. Radio WWF. Thankfully, they do get to call one match during this, and it's mm. called much better. Jim Ross really shows his history during that match. Yeah. I'll go into that. One I, I think Jim it. Ross is basically like, "Check me out, I'm amazing." Like Jim like, Ross comes on and he's like, "Here's yeah, some facts, he's like, right? He's like, Here's this is some... why. This is why you put me here and yeah. not there. You know? Yeah, um, it's great. Bobby so, Heenan's last. Bobby Heenan's last." Uh, Pay per view for a while as well. Is it? Is it? Is it? Yeah, it lasts for it's last for, it's last for full time. Oh full time. man, it lasts full time. One. Heenan's great, and he comes out with some crackers in this. Mm. So stay with us for all of that. Yeah. So then to the first match, we have Adam Bomb Baby yeah. versus <laughs> Diesel, Erwin Arshayster, Rick Martel with that? Harvey Whippleman versus the One Two Three Kid, Marty Janetti, Randy Savage, and Razor Ramon. Can you imagine Adam Bomb doing the Adam Cole thing? Yeah, so, man, no, probably imagine. not. His gimmick was interesting. So this is Adam Bomb, baby. Adam Bomb, baby. <laughs> I thought about it, and I just can't get it on my head. Um, this is his first pay-per-view, and if you've been with us for a while, you know we like to do a little bit of history, and there's quite a lot of new wrestlers in this, yeah. so we're going to go into a little bit of history his, about What do you think of his tights, first off? Uh, his tights, interesting. Yeah. His whole gimmick was weird, man. The goggles. Yeah, well, yeah, like the, the greeting, for yeah. for um, Becky Lynch goggles. Indeed. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think he was... 
he, he was good. So a bit about his history. He teamed with Rick Steiner at Starcade against Vader and Mr. Hughes. Um, he was a television <laughs> champion at Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Obviously, Smoky Mountain Wrestling at this point has sort of Collaborate. been collaborating. Uh, that was the company that Jim Cornette owned. Were during this pay per view, we're also going to get a Heavenly Bodies and Rock and Roll Express match, which was part of the Smoky Mountain Wrestling and what was going on there. So that's how he's come across. Mm-hmm. His gimmick was that he was a survivor of the Three Mile Island nuclear meltdown accident. I don't know much about that, but I'm guessing it's a place in America where there was a nuclear meltdown. Um, and obviously, Adam Bomb was a pun on atom bomb but brian clark who was the wrestler's real name was raised in harrison pennsylvania which was actually not far from three mile island so that's how they sort of developed Didn't the it, gimmick yeah. yep he later wrestled in wcw using his real name and was in the tag team chronic where he'd go on to have a handicap match against goldberg which was a loser leaves no it wasn't a loser if goldberg lost because it was his part yeah. of the streak where if he lost a match he would be leaving um and, and and he had a tag team match, with a handicap match against them. Obviously, Goldberg won. Uh, he returned to WWE in 2001. I think this was a chronic again. And he was feuding with the Brothers of Destruction yeah, at the time. Yeah, that was... a couple of pay-per-views. Yeah, they, they, yeah, the slow starters. I think that was the WC... That was when they melded for the it invasion. Was. Yeah, for the yeah. invasion, yeah. I think when the WCW was bought, he was actually injured at the time. I think he had an ankle injury, I want to say. And then moved across to... WWF for this feud with the Brothers of Destruction. So there we go. So after SummerSlam, a little bit of history into this match, Jack Tunney had stripped the belt off Michaels. Um, so Shawn Michaels no longer has the belt. Razor Ramon has the belt after a Battle Royale were occurred on Raw. Was it Raw or Superstars? It was one of them. Um, which was to name the top two contenders for the belt, which ended with Razor and Marty Jannetty. They'd have a match where Razor would win the Intercontinental Championship belt. This is all part of the build-up to their really WrestleMania well done, 10 Really match. well done when you think about it, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. The, the great thing about this is, is Shawn Michaels is still saying... No, I'm I'm still the Intercontinental Champion, even though Jack Tunney's taken it away from him. So you've got that sort of arrogance, and you've got you've almost got two belts, and you'll have the the clever thing about it is, as a fan, I could have an argument with you, right? If this happened in modern day, I could say, well, no, the Miz has still got the belt, and you'd say, no, Seth Rollins has got it because that's yeah. what's been decided, and it, and that's the clever sort of discussion. And I'm sure all the magazines were hitting it out at the time, and all that sort of WWF related memorabilia. Yeah. Uh, Adam Bomb comes down with his steampunk goggles on. Yes, little LEDs in his goggles oh. to make him look super cool. Greasy hair. I think he looked like something from the Attitude Era, didn't he? He did, yeah. He, well, he, yeah like like he a should, rhino. Like or... he should have been a member of Raven's Flock or something, but in the early yeah. days, yeah. Yeah, he did, yeah. In, in a very different time when we don't really have that. IRS comes into the ring and says something about taxes. Yay. Uh, Razor gets the mic when he gets into the ring and talks about his perfect partner announcing that Macho Man Randy Savage is replacing oh, yeah. Mr. Perfect in this match. There was actually no reason given for it on WWE. Um, yeah, Mr. Perfect, uh, there was a couple of reasons that, that it's speculated. One, that he was having family problems. Oh, and the right. second, that he didn't wasn't happy about losing the Intercontinental title. Oh, okay. the one. So there's two conspiracy theories that have never been quite confirmed, but the most likely one is, is family issues. Yeah, because um, he lost the Intercontinental Championship a while ago, so I can't see yeah. why, he'd, why he'd be issued about that at this time. But maybe not, maybe so. Razor starts off the match against Rick Martel. We've seen Rick Martel, we haven't seen him. Strike Force. Yeah. It's... I mean, Rick Martel was great, man, in the 91 mm. Rumble and stuff. I yeah. wasn't as impressed with him in this, but... Yeah, the, mo- I think... the model gimmick, like I say, it kind of, uh, you know... It, there's only so far you can go... With those gimmicks, the like Val Venus, things like that. You know, even though it's a different gimmick in a lot of ways, but there's only so far you can go with those gimmicks, really. I think but Martel that. was so talented. I mean, yeah. look at the 91 Rumble, where he was he was the prototype Ric Flair in that Rumble. Yeah. That, you know, day's, he was great. that day's Dolph Ziggler. Yes, he was. He was great. Mm-hmm. He was great. Yes, he was. Dolph Ziggler there you all go. the time. There you I, go. I don't think there, there will be one podcast where you don't mention Dolph Ziggler. You just said that. Ziggler. You just said Dolph Ziggler. You just, you okay. just inadvertently okay. said Dolph Ziggler was great. I just agreed with you to get you off uh, Dolph Ziggler. Um, I imagine like Riz Ramon and Martel, the whole sort of gimmick of both of them, would have had a, a really great dynamic. They were both really great wrestlers, and I imagine it would have been a really great feud. Yeah. Feud actually, I haven't seen much of their feud. I know they did feud they a little did feud bit, for but a while, yeah. I think it would have been really. Razor, good. Razor got the. Uh, the, the, the rub yes. during that period yeah. of time. 
The two have a lot of nice back and forth. It's mm. Razor generally dominating Martel. And then Martel tags Adam Bomb Baby in, who squares up against Razor and pushes him back during multiple lockups. It, it gets a little slow at this point with Adam Bomb. Yeah. They were really selling Adam Bomb during this match, was, I will say yeah, that. Yeah, he was meant to be... I mean, he looked very impressive. He looked like he, he could did. have been a main... You know, at the time, you know, when this was... These characters were very much focused upon, he could have been a main event, right? You know, in, in, in a lot well, of ways. Well, one of the things that surprised me about this match is who goes out before Adam Bomb. Mm, yeah. um, but we'll get into that yes, when we did. go into it. Because he's a very similar mm. style person to, to Adam Bomb, but obviously see, became massive compared to I tell to you what, what, there was a lot of crossover, sometimes too much crossover between, and he's a guy that appears in this, Crush and Adam Bomb. They were yeah. very similar. Yeah. They yeah. looked similar. They had similar tight gimmicks. I hate Crush. Uh, really. Yeah, I, str- on, I, I really man. struggled with Crush. Ah, oh, dude. Um, um, so it gets a little, little slow with lockups at this point until Razor super, suplexes for a pin. Martel goes to break it up, but Razor moves out of the way, leading him to hitting Adam Bomb. The two heels square up. All the heels get into the ring with the manager. Martel even hits the manager at one point. Um, like a little bit of friction. Yeah. Good. I mean, yeah, a, a heel team that can't stay together. Good story in enough, the ring. Yeah. The one, two, three kid comes in to face Adam Bomb and he's thrown around all yeah. of the ring. One, he was doing a really good job of selling, wasn't he? Yeah. he? He always did. It wasn't just about him having a high flying offense, but it was yeah. also about him having a high super flying ta- sort of super talented uh, dynamic. You know, he was the underdog before Ray. You know, before the underdog was was popular, he was he was responsible at this time with, with, with bringing the underdog to the forefront. You know, guys yeah. like Rey Mysterio. It was almost it was okay for them to be the underdog and come out on top because of. You know, arguably, probably a very challenging time backstage for a guy like the One Two Three Kid, who was never going to be top of the card, no. according to Vince McMahon. Um, he, he always made people look strong, but mm. never made, but never made himself look weak. No, no. As in, like, no. obviously weak in terms of a, you know, physical strength, but in terms of you know resiliency, all that kind of stuff. The kid always looked really good. Absolutely, I completely agree with you. Uh, there was a massive gut wrench suplex that looks like it kills the kid again. Wicked job of selling. Uh, um, he eventually gets a Hurricanrana onto Diesel, and then gets a hot tag on Macho. Nice to see Hurricanrana at this point. Yeah. And the the kid was that sort of flexible. He could yeah. do stuff like that. It really was great. good. Really good. Savage comes in, and and the crowd go a bit crazy for Savage. It's nice to. Any any time that Savage gets into the ring at this point is sort of a novelty for the crowd because yeah. obviously he was commentating a lot on Raw. He did have a few matches on Raw. I know he had a match against Doink on Raw and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it was a slow time for him. It was. It was. A, it was a harsh time for him, especially when he could have been feuding with Sean. And I mean, that would have been excellent. Oh man, that was a missed opportunity. I think. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll talk about it a little bit later. We've got a question actually later on from Susan yes. who mentions that, and I, and uh, I did a little bit of watching of, of Savage versus Shawn Michaels matches, which was awesome. Cool. Uh, yeah, so Savage comes in, dominates the teal team, including Irish Whippy and Adam Bomb and Diesel together. Savage then climbs a tar- turnbuckle for an elbow and gets a pin on Diesel. Mm. Like, the first person to take a bit pin was Kevin Nash. That's quite surprising when you think yeah. he's in the ring with, like, Adam Bomb, yeah. IRS. Backstage, uh, yeah. yeah at this of- point... They weren't ready to go with Diesel, but they still. I think they have a lot of hope for him. I think. At this well, point, if you look at the Rumble '94, yeah. like he has a massive showing into that, yeah. and we'll get into the yeah. review next time. I think time. they're starting to feel high on him. They're starting to. They're starting to not pull the trigger, but definitely, definitely uh, squeeze a little bit. Yeah, you know, but for him coming. to be the first out, and he didn't yeah. really do much in this per- yeah, in this pay per view, which is strange. I think he was still like the secondary character to Sean at this point as well, yeah. and I think that's probably that's why. True. In the same way, Virgil was a secondary character to Ted DiBiase. So, yeah. You know, you're not you're not gonna give them. You, you, it doesn't matter if mm. they go. I suppose. IRS was in the ring with Savage. One of the things I noticed about Owen Arshaisa during this match was his Irish whips. Man, IRS kind of annoys me. Apart from his finisher, I, I, this whole time really I got on my nerves. Yeah. Apart I think from the killer the, briefcase finish, that was cool. Yeah, the gimmick is a bit naff, but one of, the, one of the things I noticed during this match was his Irish whips were so strong. Like, he proper, like, in a similar way to Wyatt, I suppose, he'd, he'd really dig his foot into the ring as he was pulling them and really threw them into the ropes, making it really believable. 
I think IRS did some really good work in this match with mm. Sean Waltman, for example. Really nice work where he'd, he'd, he'd throw him into the ring. Yeah, I was they, impressed. They have a couple of good matches as well, post and pre this. Yes, yeah, because they've had um, this feud going on because um, of steal, the, 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 the Razor Ramon the razor, thing. He steals beating. Razor's chains and yes, stuff like that, yeah, but also yeah. they'd been taking the mick out well, of Ted DiBiase wanted to buy Razor because he beat he got beat by the one two three kid, and it set up a whole feud between Razor, the Million Dollar Corporation, and one two three kid was in. There, yes, right? yeah. Um, Macho goes against IRS in the ring whilst Crush comes out. Crush comes out from the back in his heel gimmick. This is the first time that we've seen his heel gimmick. Uh, was he ever in a heel gimmick in Demolition? I don't think he was, was he? Uh, he was in the first Demolition, yeah, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, demolition. When he first came in. Yeah, still corny as hell. The massive, like, C on his outfit. He's gone back to the sort of Demolition face paint with sort of a silver streak on one yeah. side and, and, yeah... Macho wants Crush. They used to have been building up a bit of a feud, which would build up to the WrestleMania match at WrestleMania 10, obviously. Whilst Macho is distracted by Crush, of course, he gets pinned uh, by IRS. Nice little feud build there. Yeah, sure. it's, it, it, it comes across later on in the pay-per-view mm-hmm. as well. Marty Jannetty finally gets into the ring. This is about 20 minutes into the match, and we've not seen Marty Jannetty yet. I would say... I was excited to see Gennetti again, yeah. and was... he didn't really speed up the match as much as he used to. No, this was a good time for him, though. I think this was probably one of his biggest pushes in his history. In terms, he was, of, he was about back to and win, forth with the Intercontinental He was about to win the tag titles as well with the kid, and that was yeah. a really good underdog team that people believed in. Yeah, people believed in my Gennetti again post Rockers. Obviously, you know it's a very you know. People can't really knock his, you know, he's had more success than many people in terms, yes. of, you know, in terms of tag titles anyway. I think it's, it, the whole um, drug thing oh, yeah. and all that sort of messed up his run at this time, yeah. I think. Because yeah. he become unreliable in WWF uh, and you can understand that, you know. How can they push a guy who's like off with issues and, mm, you equal, know? Equally, you know, I mean, I was, re- I was researching just recently something about Lex Luger and, and I think a lot of it's to do with, you know, when you have a degree of fame, but you're not getting the success that you feel you did, you know, I don't feel like that whole. Probably, you know, there's probably, probably a degree true, of jealousy yeah. between the mic, you know, Michaels and everything, and how well Michaels is. And you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose your mind a little bit. Maybe get a little bit depressed. Maybe get a little bit down. And I mm. feel like that may have happened. You know, poor, poor my Janae, as it were. You know, it's just, it's a shame for 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 that really because he was such a great talent. But we've talked about was, this before. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I, I agree with you. It's good to bring it up again because it has been a while since we've seen him. Yeah, Razor gets a Razor's Edge, which he held on IRS. He held he held IRS in the air for a long time. IRS was not a light guy, you know. No. It looked really impressive. Um, and then he pins IRS, which was cool. Everyone gets in the ring, and during the confusion, IRS comes wax back into comes, the ring and hits Razor with his razor, briefcase. Yeah. Um, whilst he has Martel in the air ready to give the Razor's Edge, so it, he was holding yeah. Martel in the air, and then IRS comes and hits him with a briefcase. IRS walks out with his fist in the air and he was bust open on his, his nose a slight bit as well. I don't know when that happened. I didn't spot it. During this time, Razor Ramon is counted out due to the briefcase punch. So continuing their feud there. I was very surprised, actually, when I saw the lineup for the faces. I thought, OK, that'll be Macho and Razor winning. That would be the... I loved it. You know, um, it, it, was a, it is a good idea, actually. It is a good idea putting it on the underdogs for the win at the end. But we'll get into that. Martel and 123Kid hang, head into the ring. There was a lot of running on the ropes and really nice cartwheel from Martel at one point to avoid the 123Kid. You know, he'd come back off the ropes and cartwheel to avoid. It was just smart, man. Obviously, that was followed by his arrogance. His, oh, look at what I did. Yeah. To get beat up. Nice. Great stuff, man. And yeah. the 123 Kid ends up against Adam Bomb, baby! And he went for a suicide dive onto Adam Bomb, but he was caught and slammed hard onto the cold, hard crash mats. I sort of hate these blue crash mats around yeah. the ring at this point. Like, I, 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 I like PE, are they? You know, like they are, in, yeah. Yeah, in sports, you know, sports halls, you know, in our physical education. Uh, we had, the, we had these, yeah, the same, probably the very same blue yeah, crash blue, mats. Yeah, blue crash mats. And now they've got crash mats on the outside of the ring, but yeah. they're they're dis, not disguised. We know what they are. Yeah. But they're painted black, aren't they? They don't look yeah. like crash mats. The one, two, three kid eventually pins the model Martel, followed by a quick pin. Um, Roll ups. That's even quicker by Ginetti, who sort of tosses himself over the rope and pins Adam Bomb very quick. 
I thought the match was okay. They sold Adam Bomb really well. I was really surprised he got sort of a bigger monster push than Diesel at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was the real threat in the heel team, I suppose, which really surprised me. Yeah, it was nice. It really I, surprised I really me. Like, I really like that. One it was alright. Hi- one of the highlights of, of the paper. Of a really bad paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It was a good one. opener. And, uh, and the uh, Doinks on a mission. I don't think there was, there, was, there was anything wrong with the match, but I think it sh- could have been... A slightly stronger heel team to sell the threat. It felt a bit mismatched, but, yeah. you know, that's all. So then we're told we can call a hotline to vote Superstar of the Year. Another money-making scheme by WWF. If you call a hotline for £73 yeah. per minute, you can vote for your Superstar of the yeah, Year. They had, a, they, had a, they had a UK equivalent number, I think. For, Did they? Yeah, I think so, for like uh, like later years. Yeah. I remember calling. You Did could you? Win, you could win, yeah, but like uh, you just get an automated line or something. Oh, of course you do, yeah. And, and who was you speaking to? And you have to? to do it. You have to do it like at a certain time because obviously there's, there's a time difference. Yeah, yeah. So you do it at a certain time. Yeah, it was just an automated line. It wasn't anything exciting. Oh, sorry to hear that, dude. Yeah. So um, we get an interview with Shawn Michaels who says he should be Superstar of the Year. Nice little link there. And sells the fact that he never lost the Intercontinental Championship as we've gone through. Then we have a really awkward segment. So this is Ray Com- Co- Combs. Ray, Com- Ray, Ray Combs. Combs. Ray Combs. Combs. Who's, he's a host on Family Feud at the time. Uh, uh, I think that's... Is that what we'd call Family Fortunes? Mm. I think it is, isn't it? So in, in the UK, we have a game show called Family Fortunes. Which has been going on way is, too long. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's got... Our survey says... Uh-uh. It's got its place. Yeah, it does, yeah. It's, it's like TV, if you like that. I don't watch that. I watch wrestling. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Ray Combs interviews the Hart family, including Stu Hart, who's there. Uh, speaking of meatloaf being number one earlier on at this time, Bret Hart, man, he was wearing an interesting outfit. So he had a white shirt and a waistcoat. He looked a bit similar to he, meatloaf, he had, man. He had that in the Attitude Era as well. He bought that back. Did he? The if he shirt, had a yeah. if he had a cravat on, he would have done yeah. anything for love. Yeah, the white shirt and the waistcoat. He could have been a bat out of hell. Yeah, a Brett out of hell. A Brett out of hell. Very good, dude. Very good. You're good with these puns, aren't you? Wrestling puns. Uh, Michaels and his knights uh, have upset the hearts and made it personal. The hearts are a proud family. We're sort of getting into this whole family of hearts thing a lot more right now. Yeah, they did well of downplaying Jerry Lawler's involvement, actually. They just kind of... Which the WWE, the yeah. WWE does that every week. Every year, they just leave gimmicks. Remember Sister Abigail? You just, you just gloss over it. Yes. Like it never happened. Yes. And they're very good at that. I always applaud I applaud WWE at their avoid ability to avoid Avoid the yeah. matters that they yeah. don't want to talk about. Yeah, I agree. Michael says if he had a mum and do- dad ugly, as ugly as the heart's mum and dad, he'd have put them in the ground a long time ago. That's a good heel remark there. Yeah, I like ash. that. Ah, it's fine. It's there, fine. He's, 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 it's so good to have Michaels, actually. He this is, is a great promo. He, he brings up the history with Brett and the fact that uh, he lost last year's Survivor Series. Yeah, really nice promo. He had that sort of arrogance in this promo and his yeah. gum chewing. He was chewing gum and he was really eccentric. He did that for a it? long time. Yeah, man, especially around this time. Yeah, yeah. 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 We head back into the ring where they point out the Hart family sat front row, including, obviously, Helen Hart. I found out something quite interesting about Helen Hart in my research. Really? Or, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, there was an interesting point in this match. You know, they had to rehearse it the day before. What, the The match? whole match, the whole match. Because, really? yeah, there was no full-time performers apart from Brett and Owen. Michaels had been on a suspension, and obviously the other, the other Hart members hadn't wrestled for... A while, a while the, yeah. So they uh, they they rehearsed it. Um, they I'm re- sure there's a lot of matches they, they, that are rehearsed. Yeah. Well, to be yeah, honest, obviously, but but, uh, but yeah, they had to they had to get together the day before ah, in Stanford. Cool. It's a weird match, man. But we'll, yeah, we'll get into slow, the match yeah, when yeah. we. Uh, Rick does a really Rick comes again. This is from Family Ray Feud. Combs. Does an awful promo, man. That lasts lasts for about five minutes about Family Feuds and telling us a story that we already know. Trying to be funny. Vince was doing my head in, man. He was laughing at these really crap jokes that the rest of the audience just wasn't interested in and Vince is on comic book oh! yeah, yeah. and Hina's yeah. just like oh trying to push it forward trying to get a good old Vince trying to I want to go to WCW Dub C Dub <laughs> we're going to Dub C W yeah I think this is the this is the sort of problem with this era and the, the lack of video packages setting up film it was an awful build up it went on forever 
and probably affected the match in many respects because yeah. this sort of build up for it like Michael's promo was great and then this that five minute thing was just rubbish so the match we have the Hart family Bret Hart Bruce Hart Keith Hart and Owen Hart versus the Black Knight the Blue Knight the Red Knight and Shawn Michaels I burped as I said Shawn Michaels all that was quite sudden. impressive all, um, yeah, all of a sudden out of nowhere because Jerry Lawler had been very naughty yeah, so yeah, you can, you can talk about Jerry Lawler. He was originally supposed to be part of a heel team, but due to legal issues, yes. he couldn't compete yeah, he, at the time. He'd, he'd been in trouble with the law. We'll say you can research. No, I think it. you can say it. I think yeah, I think we can say it. I think it was it was accused he of was rape. Accused of rape, uh, but by, later on, by the a, woman. Yeah, it was a teen. It was a teenage girl, but she couldn't get her story straight. So eventually, it was cleared. But well, she she actually confessed that she'd made up the story. Yeah, in yeah, the end, yeah. Which is, you know. She couldn't get the and uh, WWE obviously uh, brought him back in. Um, a bit like Enzo Amore yeah, and his consensual well, actually, yeah, penis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which he's been he's been cleared of now. But I don't think he'll ever come back because no, I found him annoying as hell anyway. I, th- I think um, there was a last straw as a probably to. off to TNA. And um, um, I said consensual penis. Have you seen the Enzo Amore rap video yet? No. We need to watch that afterwards. What do you mean? He's released a, a video a couple of days ago, which is like, uh, and and it's a rap video where he basically slags off wrestling fans. Uh, slags, slags off podcasters and says about no. um, I'm I'm here with my consensual penis. Yeah. Incredible. Like a phoenix, I'm writhing. Consensual. I can't rap. I hate rap. Anyway. Consensual. Can we say? It's pe- awful. Can, can we say penis? Well, it's too late now. If we can't. Well, you did it this time. I did it this time, did so this that's time. fine. I'm, it's I'm fine. sorry if we get if we get if we get called out. Saying, <laughs> then it's my fault. Penis. <laughs> really. <laughs> So Wang. the match has the blue knight. Hang the red, on. Oh, go on. Are you gonna, oh no, we're going to go into the knights. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the blue mention. knight, the red knight, and the black knight. The blue knight was played by Greg the Hammer Valentine. The red yeah, knight bit was of a, bit of a bit of a bit of a step down for old Greg. Old Greg. Yeah. Um, yeah. The red Not knight. Not a bad place to put him. I suppose. Red knight ended up being Barry Horowitz. Uh, Barry, originally someone else originally it, someone else yes indeed um, I don't want to spend too much time looking at my notes so I'll see what I can do from memory from my research but uh, Barry Hall was, was was always interesting to me I loved him as, a, as, a, as the as the lovable underdog as it comes up in the later part of uh, the next few years he becomes the, the jobber that then eventually stops jobbing and everybody loves him but in this match he takes the place from Terry Funk uh, Terry Funk was approached to do the uh, the the do the uh, job, do the job as the Red Knight, uh, and Vince had him in mind for a role backstage, uh, which was held by Pat Patterson. Uh, it was involved in like assistant booking stuff like that, and uh, it was held by Pat Patterson who wanted to lighten his workload. Terry Funk um, basically did the pay per view, but then kind of snubbed Vince a little bit. Um, he didn't want to live in New York, which is one of the main reasons. He's a country boy, isn't he? Yeah, and on the on the uh, the the alleged excuse that uh, Terry Funk gave Vince on the night was he left him a note, and he said, "I'm sorry, my horse is ill. <laughs> it, it, it might die. I'll see you later." <laughs> and that was that. And then Terry Funk, of course, years later, Chainsaw Charlie and all that comes back in. And apparently the first thing Vince says to him, in a rather wry, dry tone, as Vince is wont to do, was, uh, how's your horse? <laughs> that's and, a great uh, story, yeah, man. Yeah, that's a really good story. Yeah, that's yeah, story. yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, was, that was pretty fun. Um, I just want to fact check, because I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, misinform you guys. Head Booker, there you go, that was the Head role. Head Booker was Head the role Booker was the role he was after, yeah. I think he could have done a good job as head booker. We would have had the Attitude Era a lot earlier. Yeah, we would. (laughs) More tables, more shit. We need barbed wire. Someone give me barbed wire. Um, (laughs) Here's my chainsaw. (laughs) We'll have a chainsaw match. Years early, here's the chainsaw (laughs) that they're going to give me. You see, Crush would have been way cooler with a chainsaw. Would have been, yeah. Way cooler. Uh, So that's the Red Knight, played by Barry Horowitz in this, after Terry Funk didn't, didn't do the work. And then the Black Knight, who is played by Jeff Gaylord. We're just gonna leave Jeff Gaylord that name to sink in. Ah, <sighs> I didn't want. To, I didn't want to break. I, I was like, I, I, I'll avoid the name. But wow, Jeff Gaylord. <laughs> hey man, there's plenty of Gaylords out there. Is there? Is there a whole? That's the thing yes. Is there a whole army of Gaylords somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they give me a whole year followers. 
Well, you can now be called whoa, the Gay Lords. Whoa! <laughs> Holy monkey! We need that on a T-shirt. Oh, dude! We just come up with that. That's brilliant. Uh, thank ga- you, Jeff. G A H Y Lords. The Gay Lords. Yeah. Oh, dude! This is amazing. What a wonderful day. What a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful day. day. Uh, let's go into the history of a couple of the wrestlers who are new in this. That's Bruce Hart, Keith Hart, and Jeff Gaylord. Gaylord. I think he should be the, the the wrestler of our podcast. Should we have his face on it? Yeah, so, man. We'll just his... as the knight, just as yeah, him. yeah, the white knight. And, awesome. re- and, and, res- and wrestling <laughs> wrestling marks, wrestling fans of the old school will be the only people that get it. I don't think it? anyone would get <laughs> it, but, <laughs> but I'd get it, and that'd We'd be awesome. Uh, so a little bit of history into Bruce Hart. He was the second child in the generation of the Hart family, uh, in this generation of the Hart family. Sorry. While Helen was pregnant with Bruce, Helen and Stu were both in a car crash, which meant that him and his older brother, Smith, were being cared for by his grandparents while Helen was in hospital for two years. That's an awful Mm. automobile accident, isn't it? Indeed. Indeed. Very lucky. Very lucky in a lot of ways in terms of the recovery, but obviously two years is... Yeah, it's it's a a, a long time. Um, So she must have been really badly hurt. And that was while she was pregnant with him as well. That's that's awful. My mum was in a car crash when she was pregnant with me. Really? Really. I believe she was pregnant with me. It was either she was pregnant with me or just before me, or maybe it was my auntie that was pregnant at the time. Okay. I'd have to ask her. Anthony History there, everybody. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Well, we're glad you're here. Woo! We're glad you made it. Yay! So that what I could talk that? about Jeff Gaylord in 30, Indeed. the age of 32. Um, yeah, so he'd been wrestling since 1972, where he'd been part of promotions such as Stampede Wrestling. Stampede Wrestling was Stu Hart's mm-hmm. wrestling promotion, mm-hmm. so obviously he'd be wrestling there, as well as British Promotions and New Japan. It was actually Bruce who invited his younger cousin, Davy Boy Smith, to come to Canada to wrestle. Davy Boy Smith, who would later obviously become... The British Bulldog. The British Bulldog. I don't know what that American accent was. Neither do I, but, but he, he was, went there. But he was, he was billed separately as from Leeds and then from Manchester. Yes, he people, was, yeah. People just kept mixing it up. Yeah, Where was he from? Wigan. Wigan. Thank you very much. But they, wouldn't have, they wouldn't have advertised Wigan on no, the WWE. They would now. They would now, they would now yeah. Now. yeah. I'm pretty sure there's somebody... Well, you say that. They were trying to say that Rusev was Russian at one point when he first came in, weren't they? Was they? Oh, they yeah. Were they Bulgarian. were saying he was... No, they were, say, they were saying he wasn't Bulgarian. He was from somewhere. He used to come out with a, a red, white and blue flag. Which I think is the Russian flag, and people is it just a different era now, isn't it? Yeah. You can't get away with stuff like that. And the well, now you people have, are Bulgarian. Well, now you have, why? Why exactly, is he yeah. being ashamed? Well, now of you where have he's like from? Dudley, don't you? you have um, you have um, Dudleyville? Yeah, it's no, a really no, nice Dudley place. is in like as in like Birmingham, Dudley for um, oh yeah for uh, not Pete Dunn. Uh, yeah, Pete Dunn. No, no, it's the other one. Must Tyler Bate. Yes, Tyler Bate's from Dudley. I'm going to fact check you. I think it's Pete Dunn, but yes, you can check it. Um, no, uh, Pete Dunn is from Birmingham. Yes, I thought he was from Dudley, though. But apparently not. If not, if you're saying not, that's fine. Yep, Dudley Bourne, Tyler Bate. Thank you very much. Well done. Um, it was originally supposed to be him and Brett in the sibling rivalry that went on to be Owen. It was actually Brett that suggested using Owen just as he thought that they'd have a better dynamic than him and Bruce working together. So that was interesting, wasn't it? That could have been Indeed, very yeah, different. Yeah, that was that was nice, and it was nice to obviously. I think that happened a lot, which is one of the reasons why um, Brett was so heartbroken, and, and, and well, one of the many reasons Brett uh, uh, ended up did, or not detesting, but severely disliking um, the WWE was, mm. was that you know he had so much love and for for Owen's on screen persona and on screen screen character he was a great performer and Brett saw that before anybody else did uh, yes. Vince was Vince bended to Brett's idea on this mm-hmm. other people backstage didn't think Owen could carry the load and he, and he did incredibly indeed you know? I think I, it's so sad I mean the whole screw job finish the Montreal screw job and then Brett going to WCW and then his brother dying in WWF and not being able to have people around him that he cared about. Yeah, I he, think I think Brett going to WCW was a massive mistake for him. Yeah, but you're gonna you're gonna do it to spite 
somebody, you know, he was wanting to spite Vince at the time. I think. Well, it was a screw job. Like, th- that's how he got the title. So the whole Owen thing happened after he'd gone to WCW. Mm. And then, you know, so he's sort of, he's depressed, understandably. He's lost his brother. It's an awful time. And then, you know, he has to go speak to WCW fans who didn't, I, I don't think they give him the respect that WWF fans would have done. And had it like the first promo have you seen it when he goes out and he's talking about it like the fans are really quite harsh to him like shouting boring and stuff like this while he's just opening his heart out about his brother's death and yeah. had that ever occurred in the WWF like yeah, it would have got it would have, it would have been, been yeah, more silent, nurtured by his friends and, and all sorts I think Brett Going to do a CW was the biggest mistake he made. I think, yeah. you know, and yeah. hindsight's a wonderful thing. But, hindsight you know. is a wonderful thing, yes, indeed. Um, he'd appear, so Bruce would appear sporadically in WWE and WWF, mainly in matches involving Brett, of course, uh, including the steel cage match between him and Owen that he'd, he'd end up being at ringside for and, and getting involved in. The Hart Foundation against Stone Cold, Shamrock, Gold Dust, Dust and Legion of Doom as well as Brett WrestleMania match against Vince. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bruce played a part in all of them matches. Indeed. Uh, and he's worked as a trainer for many years, so I'm going to rush through Keith Hart. He was the third child in the Hart family. He obviously worked with Stampede Wrestling again, where he spent a lot of time mm-hmm. teaming with the younger Bret Hart. So Bret Hart's original tag team partner was Keith Hart. Uh, after this run with the WWF, he returned to Stampede, where he'd become tag team champion with Chris Benoit. Interesting. Uh, obviously, Benoit, a great technical wrestler as yeah. well in Stampede Wrestling at the time. The, the great we'll, place for him to be, learn. He'll be coming up as well, won't he? Is he will it? be. Yeah. In 1994, him and his wife would win the lottery, winning $100,000. <laughs> which he'd used to try and start a political campaign, which went absolutely nowhere, so sort of blew all that money. I think then his wife left him and all sorts of... Oh, stuff after that. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Jeff Gaylord. This is an important wrestler here. The give me a whole year patron, the, patron. The, the, uh, the, <laughs> wrestler. The give me a whole year uh, mascot. Jeff the, Gaylord, our friend Jeff Gaylord. Uh, this was the only WWF pay per view he would appear in. No. Good. So Miss Jeff Gaylord. Hey, I tell you what, he looked good. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. He had muscles. He, he did. He, he actually looked like a good wrestler. Not like me. No, jeez. Mm. Jeez Louise. Um, he'd wrestle in the Universal Wrestling Foundation as enhancement talent for the likes of Sting and One Man Gang in their early career, which oh, is really man. cool. Do you remember how much we loved One Man Gang? Ah, uh, yeah, man. I love One Man Gang. Yeah. 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 Much do. better than Akeem, the American Dream. In African world Dream. Class- African Dream, sorry. I remember it would have been a better gimmick if it was an American Dream. <laughs> in World Class Championship Wrestling, he would team with Stone Cold Steve Austin for a match. Jeff Gaylord, you are my Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, he'd wrestle a lot with United States Wrestling between 91 and 95 before it closed in 96. But the United States Wrestling, we've not really ever talked about these. There, there were a wrestling company that was open. They weren't really able to compete with the Monday Night Raws whatsoever, so went bust in 96. Um, but at this time, the WWF shared a lot of the talent. The likes of Sid Justice would go and fight with United States Wrestling, and the WWF's got people like Jerry King Law involved. And this is sort of the period where WWF yeah, are reaching out to a lot of the territories for, for talent. Yep. Shawn Michaels' music hits, and we get Shawn Michaels entering the ring with his knights looking like Jeep Power Rangers, apart from yeah. Gaylord, who looked awesome. Yeah, the, 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 the outfits were already designed, so they didn't drop the uh, knights gimmick, did no, they? No, they were supposed to be the knights of Jerry the King Indeed. Lawler, of course. Michaels heads over to instigate the hearts. Really great work from Michaels. He, he, the, the three of these try and carry the match. Michaels, Owen, Hart and Bret Hart mm. and the, the, they can't I mean that's the issue it's it's yeah. a long match it has a big heel turn it's so about 20 minutes I think wasn't it until I think it was a bit longer actually it was it was too yeah. long it was way too long for for, 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 for people like Bruce, this is a pay-per-view with Bruce and Keith Hart in I mean that's how sort of low WWF are on talent at this point really and then they've also got rid of people like Tanker and Perfect who you know and it, there's probably a reason yeah. for the perfect thing that we'll never know but this pay per view was, yeah, was suffering ta- because of that. Time, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bruce was originally supposed to be the heel turning this. 
He was. Man I did it. mention that yeah, briefly, yeah. 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 Um, he was supposed to be, still but then... Surprises, Pat, it still then. surprises me. It's crazy. Yeah, it's cool. It starts off with Michaels and Bruce in the ring. Michaels is working really hard to try and build up the heat. Uh, yeah, do... They've added Ray Combs on commentary. That makes it even worse because he's just talking about rubbish and family feuds and it brings no excitement to the match whatsoever. Whilst Keith is up against Sean, the crowd are chatting boring. Anytime Bruce and Keith are in, it's a little slow. Obviously, they've not worked with Michaels. Yeah. I'm not necessarily not digging for, in not the Not really talent. worked for, on that stage for no. a long time. No. Owen comes in and hip tosses multiple nights. But it, the problem with this is it's just Owens attacking faceless, faceless people. Yeah. I mean, Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Gaylord. And, well, and I mean, wow, he could it, take a hit. Toss. Yeah, and it wouldn't have excited anybody about Barry, you know, at this yeah, time anyway. No, you no, know, no. Everything breaks down, and all four men into the ring. They all get in a corner with different knights and uh, the Michaels, and then they all Irish whip him mm-hmm. into the corner. It's the most telegraphed move. Like you see, yeah, I think it's Keith. Like. He's in the corner for a while while Brett's still dealing with whoever he was dealing with. And, and he's waiting. Oh, man. Awkward. Yeah, they didn't. Awkward. They, they planned Sloppy. it. I mean, you could tell they were planning it, but obviously, you know, at this stage, at this level, you know, at that time, it just didn't come across very well. Mm. Um, a drop kick from the top rope from Owen Hart means that one he of the gets best, the... One of the best drop kicks in the business from that... From that Owen Hart was great, was it, From a you know, flying drop kick. He did that for a number of... He did that for a yeah. long time. It was great. Um, yeah, he gets a pin on our Gaylord. The very first one. Gaylord, we salute you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I miss you. Rest in peace. The Red Knight goes out to a sloppy sharpshooter from Brett soon after. Michaels goes outside and gets punched by Stu Hart. He oversells the hell out of it. Uh, 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 Michaels is, Michaels is one. That's what he's wanting to do. Great, yeah. man. Really, really funny. I, I showed my girlfriend and she was laughing a lot. Heenan says that there's a picture of Helen on the back of Stu Hart's jacket. Obviously, Helen Hart being Stu's wife. It's actually a picture of a bear as the camera pans out. Heenan was on yeah. hilarious form yeah. again. Really nice power slam from Owen's hearts onto Michael's. And then at this point, Owen runs the ropes but collides with Brett, who's on the apron, sending him into the barricade. And during this distraction, Owen Hart's gets rolled by Sean Michaels. And pinned. And pinned, man. Indeed. Owen walks out yelling, What about me? It's the first time we hear that I what re- about me thing. I remember that very well. I remember watching He uses that. it again and again. I think he uses it in Indeed. WrestleMania 10 a lot. And obviously, this is building up to the epic feud. You know, he's sort of a bit angry about yeah. what happened with Brett. So, yeah, so basically, they. He doesn't yeah. do it right now. He doesn't yeah. take it out on Brett right no. now. But he comes back out. He does at the end of the match, yeah. Um, but there's not much left to the match. Kick up a fuss. There's five minutes left. Michael disappears to the back after the five minutes of sort of mediocre wrestling uh, to get counted out. And then Owen comes out and confronts Brett and starts pushing pushing his brother. Yep. Great stuff, man. Yep, really well. Building done. up a bit of tension. Well, probably, you know, awful like, match. Like I say, we see that we see the best moments of these matches. Towards the end, well, towards the end of them, do you know what I mean? Like, not really the case. You, know, you know, I think like obviously, you know, that end, that end was really good, and obviously the razor match as well. You know, again, the finish, the end of it was the mm. best bit. But it, it's a really weak, hard watch to get up to that bit. Mm. It's a storyline pop beat that they want to to hit, and they do hit it here. So next, Gorilla goes to punch Heenan as the commentators swap over. So Gorilla and Ross do commentary for this next match, and it that was an amazing decision. Apart from for Vince, because it really shows his weakness in commentary. We get an advert for WrestleMania X at this point. Who knew that was going to be one of the best WrestleManias of all time? I say it now. I can't wait to go back and watch it. I watched it a few a, a year ago and loved it. Um, so stay with us for that. It's in like a couple of pay-per-views, man. Two away from WrestleMania 10. Watch the build-up for it, which is a Royal Rumble, which is the next video. And like, comment, and subscribe, and all that stuff. Um, we get a video package for of Borger beating Tatanka and Shane Yokozuna. Buy our stuff. Yeah, yeah buy our stuff on Patreon. That's Patreon a good idea, man. Redbubble. And Redbubble, yeah, absolutely. Basically, just Google, give me a whole year, and our merch and comes up. Stuff there, man. Stuff. stuff there. Maybe by this point we have a Jeff Gaylord t shirt. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Gaylords. Everybody, everybody support us, Gaylords. Um. We have a video package of Borger beating Tatanka and Yokozuna, oh. giant teabagging Tatanka to put him out of the match. Yeah. 
Lex introduces the Undertaker as a tag team partner, and Undertaker comes out and Ooh. reveals his all American. No, he realizes he realizes he releases his American flag. And he releases a, yeah. his American bad bottom. Bad bottom, the first, as he's going to be known. Yes, the first introduction of the bad bottom. Yes, uh, Undertaker comes just, out with an American just flag. Just in case you're wondering, we don't. We're not actually talking about his bum. He doesn't release his bum. That doesn't come out. That's never happened. As far as I'm aware, Not Undertaker yet. has never flashed anyone. But what he does <laughs> is he... Uh, although he does look a bit like he's flashing him when he... You know, takes he does. Him. He does. Jim Cornette does most of the talking for the foreign fanatics before Crush comes in and bigs them up. For the Smoky Mountain Wrestling Tag Team Championship, the next match is the yeah. Heavenly Bodies with Jim Cornette versus the Rock and Roll Express. Legendary team. Uh, obviously, the Rock and Roll Express into last year's Hall of Fame. Indeed. Uh, Ricky Morton and Robert and, Gibson and this year's 2K18 if you wish to play them uh, yes as, the, as the, most of the Hall of Fame are to put yes. into the DLC his dad was so Ricky Morton uh, a little bit of history into him quickly his dad was a professional wrestling referee who trained Ricky to become the wrestler he became he'd wrestle in Mid-South Wrestling where Jerry the King Lawler would put him with Gibson to become the Rock and Roll Express mm-hmm. and Lawler did a lot of work with Rock and Roll Express yeah. and the Heavenly Bodies and really sort of pushed them to the moon and, and, and they were great they were, yeah. they were a good team fantastic uh, especially in the territories because of his small stature he'd obviously normally be the face that was taking the punishment he was quite good looking as well yep as far as mullets and yeah, I mean, men go. Yeah, like I said, the mullets. Um, <laughs> I mean, if you love mullets, and many people at this time did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before, So he'd take the punishment before being served by Gibson, so that's the sort of dynamic of the team. The rock and roll got, uh, Express obviously got pushed in Jim Crockett promotions as well. In 1986, he entered a programme with Ric Flair, including the steel cage match in 1986 at the Great American Bath. Mm-hmm. Bash, he'd also, they'd also feud with the Four Horsemen and stuff in Jim Crockett promotions at this time. He was part of the NWA angle in 1998 in the WWF, losing the NWA title to the Headbangers. There you go. Thanks. That's thing. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, man, the Headbangers. I love the Headbangers. Mosh and Thrasher. I love them. I can't wait to talk about that. <laughs> they came back really they did, briefly really, in 2016. Really briefly. Did, yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it 16 or 17? No, it was, was it 16. Right. Uh, the pair briefly appeared in TNA as the Sports Entertainment Extreme Group, which is a Vince Russo-led group. Special. Yes. yes. Vince special. What does Sports Entertainment Extreme shorten to? S dot E dot Vince Russo. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, honestly. The, the, the pair of them would also appear we, in... Sorry, we could probably on. get Vince Russo on this, you know. I reckon he'd be yeah, No chance, it. man. No chance. No, it? No, if we start talking he, too much about Vince Russo, he'll probably put out a restraining order against us. Do you reckon we could, he could make some positive booking decisions for us? No. Do you reckon he'd be behind the gay lot thing? Vince Russo? Actually, probably, yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think he'd be happy to push Jeff Gaylord. Um... Yeah, so you know, the, he, that's the reason why everybody got really, well, just going back to Terry Funk real quickly. That was one of the 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 uh, he, he, Russo was behind Chainsaw Charlie and the idea of the chainsaw back in the day. And, Vince uh, Russo. That's where Terry Funk, <laughs> the legendary Terry Funk, one Came of the out, greatest yeah. of all time in any organization in any decade of any well in all organisations because he was in all organisations <laughs> was he in WCW at any point yeah or was he was oh, right. Yeah. right cool uh, so the team Rock and Roll Express would also appear in Total Non-Stop Deletion a oh, yeah. TNA yeah. at the request of Matt Hardy like Matt uh, Hardy yes. wanted to wrestle them yeah the greatest yep. yeah yeah and they I was want to watch eliminated that again, actually. By, yeah man and they was eliminated by the Broken Hardys in the Tag Team Apocalypto match a little bit into Robert Gibson. Obviously, we've sort of covered a lot of the the, the Rock and Roll Express there. He suffers with what is known as strapezimus. Is that how you'd say that word? Strapezimus. Right, okay, strabismus, but okay. Which is what causes his lazy eye, so it go. was a, a birth defect. Gibson was always booked to be the stronger of the two. In WCW 91, Morton turned on Gibson, and during that time when he was away from Morton, he'd team up with Tom Zenk, and he's part owner of the Zeke's Deep Fishing Tours Zenk, in... The Zenk's? No, I think it's Zeke's. I think I'd rewrote Zenk's, but Zenk's. I think it is Zeke's. 
uh, fishing tours in Orange Beach, Arizona. So if you're in that area, hit up Robert Gibson's fishing tours if that's what you're into. Uh, so into the match, Jim Corner introduces the Heavenly Bodies. The Heavenly Bodies have fireballs on the back of the pants, looking like an early advert for great, great balls of fire. Great balls of fire. Yeah, that was the name of the pay-per-view, wasn't it? You said... I think, I no, I, I started uh, to get husky. It was, a, it was grape, a husky... Grape. Grape balls. Grape balls of fire. Great, man. The fruity fire. Um, <laughs> Ross knows that he shows the history, and this is what I was talking about earlier on. He really knows the history of the Rock and Roll Express and the Heavenly Bodies. Talking about the feuds with the Midnight Express that had happened... And it was really good, actually. Oh, yeah. It was good to get that history f- from a TV point of view. The audience, not into this match whatsoever. Mm. All four go good at an early pace, all really, yeah. really quick. Uh, the Express get into a rowing boat move, so they sort of have both of the bodies prone on the ground whilst the other two sit at 90 degrees, hold both of the legs and pull back on the legs, splitting up the good, other two legs. Yeah, good just... fun, man. I enjoyed yeah, it. Did that a few times, actually. That was pretty The cool, crowd, man. nothing from them yeah, at yeah. this. I mean... It's it's awful, really, because these two. The, this match was actually quite good, yeah. and if but even watching it, it's hard two to great enjoy tag it. Teams. They are, man. I don't think the Heavenly Bodies ever got the real. Reckon they were really great too, but the Rock and Roll Express. Uh, this, no, yeah. the, the, both of them are great, man. Both yeah, of them no, are I think great. The great Heavenly tag Bodies teams. have done great work. The, the match with the Steiner Brothers, yeah, the last match, that was great. The, I don't man. think they ever get there. I don't think they get the no. the credit they deserve as one as a, as a great team. Um. Yeah, the Express work really well together. Lots of double team moves. A lovely move where the heavenly bodies flip each other into Gibson to try and get the pin. Really nice. Cornette holds Morton, Morton whilst Jiggler moonsaults off the second rope off the apron. I mean, we're seeing moonsaults by these guys. That's great, you know. Del Rey goes for a power bomb, but Morton changes it into a Frankensteiner. Really great. Jiggler goes for the moonsault off the top rope onto Morton. It's nice to see a decent moon sort of this time. Like it's not a move that we used to see in. One, two, three, kids. He did. Yeah, one, two, three, kids started. But one, two, three. The the problem with his moon salt and and this, you know, I like I do like the one, two, three kid. Is he didn't look like he had the weight to make it look as agreed, effective agreed. as someone like Robert? It's a bit Gibson. like Kevin Owens doing a moonsault these days. Yeah, you see you'd, that occasionally. You'd be like, wow. Or a frog yeah, yeah. Is like, yeah, yeah, it looks impressive because he's got the weight. One, two, three, kid. That was the biggest problem yeah. I had. You always when he think was doing that. Was gonna, if he was going to do it to raise a you almost think he's going to, you know, that's why it was such a shock. I think people, he, he did kind of catch oh, yeah. him. But then he yeah. sort of fell, you know. So. Yeah, I think, and, and that was great, and that sort of sold the one, two, three, kid as, as this underdog wonderfully. But. It also, when he's doing these moonsaults, it sort of looks like you've got a kid doing a moonsault to a young man, uh, to an old man. It looks like a kid holding his, a man holding mm-hmm. his child, you know, yeah. at times, and that's the problem. Um, there's a lot of back and forth here that's really well set up. The Gigolo goes, uses Cornet's racket as an axe handle on the top rope to get Gibson for the pin. Not the best ending, to be honest. Um, and the tag team champions changes uh, for Smokey Ranker and Wrestling on a really large stage. The really sad thing about this match is it's really quite good, man. If, if you go back and watch it, it's just the crowd. There's no reaction from them. Yeah. Boston were into it. They Boston. just won the WWF Superstars. You was in Boston recently, weren't you? I was. That's where I stayed for four months. Um, it reminds me, not long ago, I went to a WWF house show and they had Alistair Black versus... Alexander Wolf and I was like this is awesome man you know I've, I've seen NXT house shows and and Alistair Black a guy that everyone gets behind and you have people watching it going boring and it's like are you joking man yeah. like this is great you know yeah. this is not only like yeah, we're entertaining like rest- we're like pure wrestling fans though man like. yeah exactly and that's the difficulty a, a lot of people and, and, and it's very showable in this pay-per-view because mm. we get the whole doink thing which is sort of funny but like that was actually a really good wrestling match. The Doink yeah. wrestling match, it's not even a bloody wrestling match. And they prefer that to this. Yeah. You know, which is sort of frustrating. Uh, we see a video of Bam Bang in the ring being taunted by Doink. Doink is the face at this point. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. And he doesn't Wish actually show up in the match, which shows up afterwards. Yeah, no, he doesn't. No, no, Doink shows up on the Titantron afterwards. Oh, on the Titantron, yeah, but he doesn't actually no, show up in the match. No, he's not in the match, no. No, no which is really weird. He's Doink. Um, the, the, the crowd, oh, well, I'll get into it when we go into the match. We see a video of Bam Bam in the ring being taunted by Doink. The video splits off because he won't reveal who his tag team partners. Um, my, my partner is going to be Doink and Doink and Doink. And we get four Doinks all laughing together. Quite a nice little image. 
there of Dying Kit. It was all right. Um, in the match, though, we get the Bushwhackers and Men on a Mission, Mabel and Mo with Oscar, versus Bam Bam Bigelow, Bastian Booger, and the Head Shrinkers with Affa and Luna Vachon. Would you like to talk a little bit about Mabel, Mo, and Oscar? I would love to. I would love Thanks. to, indeed. Yes. Cheers. Um, so, Men on a Mission, we're gonna we're gonna kind of uh, just to look at them both together. Uh, Pro Wrestling Federation, uh, they wrestled for, and the uh, United States Wrestling Association. Uh, they were the Harlem Knights for a bit um, uh, with um, Fraser Knight, which obviously became he became Viscera and Mabel. He was known as Nelson Knight, and there was Bobby Knight, which was Mo. Um, they did had a couple of tag team title reigns in different in different organizations, including the PWF. Um, and they also feuded in later in later years um, with the, in the USWA with guys like Jerry Lawler and Jeff Jarrett, which was good. They were kind of always pushed as that kind of big monster tag team. Well, they looked great. I mean, Mabel yeah. looked, looked oh, yeah, and he could move well, he quite well pushed, in the ring. He, he was pushed really, you know, really heavily later on. Mm. Um, when they got to mm. WWE or WWF, King of uh, the Ring winner. They were indeed. They were repackaged as good guys. They they were had they had this kind of uh, kind of gangster bad sort of Harlem heat you know like WCW type vibe where them where they were where they were kind of just angry dudes um they were teamed with a rapper called Oscar and they had this good guy gimmick where they were trying to make a difference in their community which is interesting actually because um they 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 they, they had this face thing and they were called men on a mission so Mabel Oscar and Mo and um, which was really nice uh, and they had, and I really liked the gimmick I remember watching it a num- number of times interestingly enough they won the tag titles we talk about how rare it happens at house shows but they won the tag titles accidentally uh, a house show uh, in London, uh, Mabel fell on Pierre of the Quebecers, and it wasn't a planned finish. He was supposed to Whoops. kick out, um, and um, and but they had the Quebecers. As a result, they had the Quebecers regain the tag titles in Sheffield a couple of days later. This oh, was really? reported, just like they would do. You know, they did with uh, Samoa Joe when he won the XT title. It was reported on WWE's. It was reported on anywhere it could be. You know, f- like found that they won the titles back. So because that wasn't originally planned at the time. Well, they do it occasionally to. To keep the house shows exciting, don't they? You yeah. Know, you, but, it, but it wasn't scripted. It wasn't, no, no, it wasn't no, supposed no, to no. do, yeah. No, but it, ha- it has so happened a few it, times in this year. It was reported Backlund's, on... The, um, yeah. run ends yeah. during the house show, you Indeed. know. Indeed. Is it, is it Diesel? Diesel, Diesel yeah. that's right. So it was reported on TV that, that happened. The group turned heel, uh, notably, against the Smoking Guns, um, which was which was interesting. And and Oscar actually left because he, he loved working with Mo and Mabel, um... As faces, but he didn't agree with because he liked. He was quite a positive person. He didn't agree with the heel turn. He wanted them to stay as you know, a positive, a positive face team. So Oscar actually retired after that heel turn. And left. Really, right. uh, Mabel and Mo, of course. Uh, they Mabel went on to a singles push, a brief singles push, uh, but then returned to uh, to um, the Men on a Mission for a while. Again, they feuded with the Smoking Guns, um, and that kind of went on for a little while until uh, Mabel got a push and won King of the Ring and became King Mabel. Mo became his manager at the time, uh, and so so it was King Mabel and Sir Mo. Uh, obviously, this was a real big push for Mabel, uh, and they, he was actually scheduled. He was billed as, at this point as the top heel in the the most dominant heel in WWE after this King of the Ring win he was he was scheduled for feuds with uh, likes of Diesel but it didn't happen plans changed um, and uh, basically for long and the short of it um, is that um, th- that Diesel feud that big Diesel feud didn't happen British Bulldog ended up taking taking it over um, and on a mission was supposed to uh, come back on a tag team uh, for you know and feud with the allied powers which of course was then Lex Luger and British Bulldog mm-hmm. at the time but Bulldog turned heel and then Bulldog went into this lead heel role and Mabel was kind of left to feud with the Undertaker um, but um, due to um, um, we'll call it not necessarily reliable ring work from Mabel, where he caused a number of injuries to superstars. Ooh, he, uh, he, yeah. he broke Undertaker's eye socket with a leg drop. Yes, that was uh, him, wasn't and, it? Yeah, and so he was. They they were let go um, for um, because uh, mainly because of Mabel's bad ring work. He caused a couple of injuries to different superstars, and um, yeah, basically he was let go for um, for a period of time. Of course, he would return uh, in the '99 Royal Rumble. 
um, and he had a really good showing there. Um, and this was one that I remember watching this on, on VHS. My nana had taped this for me, and I remember being really creeped out. It was at the time where the Undertaker's Ministry of Darkness were taking over. He, they were kidnapping people, and they kidnapped Mabel from the Rumble. And he returned as Viscera with those kind of creepy white contact white lenses, contact lenses um, which would stay with him, oddly enough, for his, mm. through his through his um, world's largest love machine gimmick, which right. I never understood. Yep. Um, he would, you know, so uh, so yeah, he became Viscera, really dominating, really dark, and, and I loved his character at this time. And then he would go on uh, years later to become the world's largest love machine, and kind of take on the Mark Henry gimmick. Another take on that, you know, we would be like sexy, you know, and he had a finisher called Visagra, which was very weird, you know, where he would, where he would, where he would hump his, oh, his dear. opponents and stuff. So yeah, kind of, a, kind of a shame really that the guy as dominating as this would, would go up. Mo, uh, Mo wasn't really around at this time. Uh, he didn't really have um, too much, too much to do. He ended up retiring um, in 2008. Um, I think he made a brief, brief uh, return. Um, in, in a couple of long days, I think he had. I think he had a brief run in TNA for a little while, uh, but yeah, Mabel or or Viscera obviously had a really strong run. His last term with the, with WWE was in <coughs> was in their repackaged ECW as Big Daddy V. He was um, once the number one contender for the ECW title, but lost to CM Punk. He was always going to have a good career because yeah, he was a big. But it's, it's a shame he died of a heart attack in, did, yeah. in 2014. So you yeah. know, another one of those. What could have been? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Thanks for that, dude. Um, well, we haven't done any research on Bastian Burger, have we? No, we haven't. No, sorry. That's well, he didn't fault. really have. He didn't really have some. He didn't really have any great turns. This I was think his, it's interesting. This was his second. He's a guy his... that's like um, overweight, yeah. and his image, his, his gimmick is that he's, he's <coughs> chicken. This was his second and final WWE pay per view. Is it? Well, maybe we have done him already. I'm not sure. I'm, well, I thought he appeared in it later. It's, it, it looks awful, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, it, I mean, he had the chick, you know. I mean, it was. he actually appeared on the big... I remember watching him because he appeared on the Big Breakfast. Yes, in, in yes. UK. Oh, he did talk about him last um, pay-per-view, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah sorry. He yeah. on the Big Breakfast and he was eating loads of chicken. And he was. in this pay-per-view, his, his obsession with food, um, it comes into it again. Well, turkey. Banana. You know, turkey banana and banana. Yeah, it is banana on this, yes. But turkey was the, yeah, the turkey Thanksgiving the thing. thing, you know. <laughs> uh yeah, the Hedge Drinkers and Bastian Booga get tucked into a turkey whilst Bam Bam says it doesn't matter how many donks there are. Um, after the heels enters, we get the donks music. So we're going to reveal who Doink is going to be tag teaming with. And it is the... Doinks on a mission. Bushwhackers and Doinks on a mission, as Heenan describes them. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, why the one put Doink out in some capacity? Ah, I liked it, I actually. I thought it. it was fun. I think that it was, was definitely it a filler match. I thought it was uh, fun at the time. Fun. I liked Doink coming out of the... Well, I mean, not coming out, but being on the Titan. Yeah, but the they end. should have had him to come out. Me. That's the point. I liked it. Um, Oscar comes in rapping. Yeah, yeah. Oops, there it is. Who's, who, who was... Where's that from? I can't you know, recall hit, right now. Is it, is it an it's it's American thing. rap thing? It's a thing, but that Let was Let us know if you know, actually. That's quite an interesting one. Oops, there it is. It's not a wrestling thing, is it? It's a music thing. Um, but there you go. I mean, some was, 90s was, rapper or something. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. Re, th- th- this is the problem. I don't understand why they'd all wear doink paint and wrestle as I loved doink. It. I loved it. It's awful. It was great. Um, without any doink in the team. So Fatu comes out trying to feed Bastian Booger bananas from the side of the ring. Wrestling. Samu bites one of Mabel's little balloons so to pop fun. it. Um, Butch uh-huh. hands him another one and he bites into it. This one has water in it, leading to Luke getting the pin. Yep, I thought it was so much fun. This that whole was thing. rubbish. I loved it. No, I, didn't, I, I just really didn't see the point. It was I remember just... watching it originally, thought it was great fun, but I guess I was a lot younger then. So. Did you watch it recently? Uh, um, like, I think like I think with the with the with the match recently and looking at it, I feel like. I still have it took me back to the time man any of no, this I didn't. any of this stuff now because this is the time this is the time I was watching mm. you know I started watching yeah it I, I, I get that nostalgia but I, it's just yeah anyway we'll carry on um, I just don't think it's clever comedy I think Doink had potential to have a lot of clever comedy and, and this is just it's just for the kids uh, goes to teabag Luke once again but Mabel drags him out of the way um, about 10 seconds before he pins him this is um, oh this is yeah Bastian Booger so he teabags Luke Bushwacker but instead of going for the pin he goes for a banana that 
back to his holding. Mm-hmm. Rest then. Rest then. Um, the Bushwhackers do the battering ram on Bastion. And then Mabel, who definitely want the legal man, leg drops and pins him. Moore then gets in the ring, rides a scooter around whilst Butch is getting beat up Loved for it. no reason. It was really distracting. Bam Bam drops, kicks him and throws him outside the ring. Like... It was a bunch of guys in clown makeup, dude. It was flipping brilliant. But it 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 it, it was Bam Bam Bigelow. Probably one of my favorite, probably one of my favorite matches for this. But maybe dude, it's, a it's awful. Thing. It's awful. Just a nostalgia thing. Yeah, yeah. maybe. But it must be because it's awful. Uh, Fatu gets an Uso splash from the top rope on Mo, but doesn't go for the pen. Instead, picks up a banana skin and becomes obsessed with that. Butch brings in a bucket and makes Fatu think he's going to throw water on him, but instead rolls up. Fatu for the pin. Uh, the ring at this point is a mess of banana peels, chicken and water. Mabel Amazing. comes in against Bam Bam. No sells Bam Bam's close lines. Um, a big splash from Mabel onto Bam Bam gets the pin. As the other three jump on top. The crowd go mental. Yay! Yep. See, exactly. Yeah, but it's absolute rubbish. It's It's, it's, it's appalling. It is, but no, no, in my, no. Right, in my opinion, right, everyone in this match looks weak, right? And and that's no, fine. No, no. Mabel the... looks like a... Mabel looks all right. Nah. Uh, I think Mabel's nah, okay. Weak. Um, it was a really weak... I, I liked it. Pre- I, pay-per-view I, debut for Mabel. I liked it. I liked his performance in here. And again, they, they, they had fun. They right, had the fun. Bushwhackers. It doesn't matter oh, about yeah, them. The I mean, they're the Bushwhackers, right? I thought Mabel and Merle looks really weak. And the, the worst one in all this that made him look appalling was Bam Bam Man and Bam yeah, Bam's yeah. great yeah they could have done beer. right and and putting him in this was just rubbish and it's it's not really wrestling it's I get I don't mind comedy in the ring but this it's it's not entertaining to go back and watch if you go back and watch it it's rubbish Okay, uh, well, yeah, have Bam Bam. That was yeah, that was yeah. Weird. As Bam Bam exit, Don comes onto the video screen. This is quite a good little promo yep. between the two. Yes, he taunts it is. Bam Bam, um, but I still think that there should have been some payoff with Don. Like during this promo, he should have come like, out and come out and hit him in the back of the head or something the, yeah, and well, laughed and blah blah blah. Uh, next up, an interview with the foreign fanatics again. Cornet explains how they're going to take out an All American, calling the Steiners the heart. Um, the mind is the undertaker and the soul is Lex Luger and if you take them out individually that's the strategy which is quite a, a, a good thing by Connor it was okay yeah do I have a bogey in my nose do you have a bastion boga in your nose Why no you I? don't man. Okay, no. that's good too. Uh, the foreign fanatics was Crush Jacques Rougeau who was back in Mounty Gimmick but just referring to him as Jacques at the minute it obviously he'd formed the Quebecers later on mm-hmm. uh, Ludwig Borger with Yoko Zuna and their managers Jim Cornette Johnny Polo and Mr. Fuji versus the All-Americans Lex Luger The Undertaker and the Steiner Brothers with Paul Bearer Johnny Polo he looked familiar I'm so excited about this Johnny Polo. We've covered, my, we've covered two of my of my top. I give him. I give you Johnny Polo because I in, knew you'd uh, be happy. In the in the last, you know, like one, two, three, kid, uh, X Park, and uh, Johnny Polo, or also known as Raven. Uh, so my Raven from ECW. Yeah, yep. yep. Just, just, just before we go, because I'm, I'm not going to focus on on too much of his post Johnny Polo run. But did you guys know? Um, according to the interwebs and obviously if you want to go back onto his career he is the by, he is recognized by the WWE as the most decorated wrestler in the history with six with 36 separate title reigns under the WWE obviously WCW which is owned by WWE and ECW which is owned by WWE wow. uh, including a record 27 reigns as the hardcore champion uh, so he competed in Continental Wrestling Association also wrestling and Global Wrestling Federation before heading to you... That's not the microphone. Oh, I thought you were trying to propose. No, it's to all right. Me. I'm going to try. To... Sorry, oh. I just, I just don't want the audience to hear you and you talking like that. I thought you were trying to propose. To Sorry, me. dude. Sorry. Nice. Carry on. Oh. It's, good. it's good fun. So, okay. So he, was, he competed Thanks. for Continental Wrestling Association, All Star, uh, All Star Wrestling, and Global Wrestling Federation before heading to WCW and competing as Johnny Flamengo, which was a surfer dude. I always loved his gimmicks. I watched his videos quite a lot because I was such a fan. He changed a lot. Yeah, didn't he? Scott, he did a really good job. Scott Flamengo was a surfer dude, um, and uh, he we used to have a surfboard on the way to the ring, which is great. He went on uh, one of the highlights of that time was he was part of the Diamond Mines, which is an incredibly uh, inventive tag team name with Diamond Dallas Page. Uh, moving on to his 
his uh, WWE run because I'm trying to trying to speed through this before I could, before I go off on one because I, I actually <laughs> was getting, so his first WWE run was a, he was a manager for Adam Bomb who we've already talked about yep. and he also managed the Quebecers to uh, three tag team, tag team championships he also worked as an associate producer for a while uh, in, in the WWE in the back uh, before leaving for ECW he had a couple of uh, singles matches and tag team matches as a performer as well but nothing of great note it wasn't a great it wasn't a great um he didn't have a great run let's say as a single competitor he was always better as a manager this time, no. and a glimpse into his genius obviously I think he he actually he actually one of my first encounters with Johnny Polo was he presented a VHS one of the VHS's oh, right. of like best ofs for WWE yeah. at the time and he was like you know going through the archives and stuff really good fun you know going, going, wrestling fan, going in the back end you know going to the backstage and what going through the tapes and looking at them and I was brilliant as a host and he was he was meant to be this kind of spoiled rich guy and, and he played that very well and then of course he went to Raven and ECW and he becomes um, one of my favourites of all time. So without, because I could spend the rest of our time talking about Raven. Yeah, well we'll save it for when you when we talk about him next time but I will give you him when we talk about him in 2002, yeah. wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, 2002 comes, to, comes to, yeah, to, obviously to he has a again. massive run WCW and, and ECW and then comes back for a brief run as well. What do you think about his work as a manager? Um, I, I, I mean, he, 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 a weird he, character. he fit the bill perfectly, you know, that, that kind of spoiled rich guy, and he was mm. kind of annoying. You know, I, I didn't quite get his pairing with the Quebecers, but um, no, you know, but but he he, he was with him through all the success. But with Adam Bomb, it was yeah, yeah Adam Bomb was interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool, thank you, dude. Uh, so at this point in wrestling, Borga has ended to think to thank a streak. At this point, Yokozuna's music starts playing as Crush walks down. Whoops, so Daisy, someone messed up backstage. Quite funny. Yokozuna fire. enters before the lights go out and. The biggest cheer of the night, so over, man. Uh, Undertaker comes yeah, out. He, he starts a mega feud, which is one of the With fantastic. Yokozuna. I remember, I remember that casket match, which I won't go into because obviously that comes up really soon. But I remember freaking out by being genuinely frightened. You know when they shut him in the casket in Yokozuna. the ninety-four. Yeah, 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 oh yeah, no, no, it's, the, com- it's coming up soon. Right, uh, the Survivor Series, the next That's one. That's a lot later. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the next one. But yeah. I remember this this whole feud goes on for a while, and you know, and you know when he. When he sits up after the, bon, you know the bonsai. This this man. is this, this one of the best little segments in this pay per view is the Undertaker Yokozuna section mm-hmm. that we get at the end mm-hmm. of this match, and we'll talk about it when we get into it. But it is a really nice little intense segment. It can't save the match, yeah. But no. it it yeah. is a really it's nice. Brilliant. It's the best I, work. And, and on this I remember pay-per-view. being genuinely like, oh my god, that guy's super. Oh, you will do, yeah. I mean, Undertaker all of it was, yeah, all of it. Yeah, you yeah, know, even yeah. the even the light, you know, even the lights, and it was like, oh my yeah. god, this guy's controlling. You know. and, and look, we've got to be thankful that he's out of the feud with Gonzalo. Now, you yes, know, and moving on to other things. So, at the start of the match, Undertaker and Yokozuna come together. Like, there's a really good shot where they look like they're about to kiss, um, but <laughs> it looks great, man. And yeah. it's like, and they don't play it off as such a big deal, but it yeah. is a really, really great. Everyone was like, oh, yeah, we really want to see it. And it's a nice little hint to what we're going yes. to see in this match. Uh, the Mountie quickly tags out, ending up with Yokozuna versus Rick Steiner. The Steiner brothers did quite Alt, a lot of work to try Alt, and carry they this hold match. their own in this match. I think they're one the Steiners of the, were great. Some of the great impressed I, I me so much. They're probably my lead performers and one of my lead performers for this. Potentially, as a, potentially. As a whole team. Yeah. Uh, in, but like match of last. The, the, the last pay per view, yeah, yours, did, like certainly, yeah. Heavenly Bodies and the Steiners, the, the pay, WrestleMania Nine, the Steiners, they were putting on yeah. amazing, yeah, incredible. Shows. And I never, never really liked the Steiners as a kid. Yeah, never. Uh, Rick lays into him with a clothesline, which Yokozuna actually sells really well. Like Yokozuna yeah. selling, like looking like they were having some impact good on him. He had some good, he had some good moments through his career of selling. Sometimes he didn't. Sometimes he'd do yeah, that whole yeah, 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 like yeah. stand still and just sort of walk yeah. a bit. These he like sold like the the, the proper took him back. Yeah. Really good, and it was probably because Rick was going at him. You know, yeah. like I'm not just gonna let you not sell me. I yeah. will. You know, really great. crack you. Really great. Uh, Rick climbs onto the top rope for a bo- cross body um, onto Borger because Lord Ludwig Borger's come in. The really nasty spot actually where Borger tosses Rick outside, but he connects with a cameraman, and we see the cameraman like picking up his camera off shot. He like proper hit into this poor dude who ends up on his back. Um, he flops, so Rick climbs top rope, goes for the cross body onto Borger, but Borger doesn't hold him, right? It's, it's a really weird looking move. He sort of flops back really awkwardly and then gets the pin. Mm. And it's like Rick Rick had done some great work and it ends just I do need to fact I do need to fact check myself here because the names are similar, so maybe we do have maybe we should go back on, on 
on uh, Bastion Bugger. It's it's Borger's second. It's Borger's one of the last Borger's last performances in the WWE. Yes, because he got so, injured after this. So my, yeah. so I gave so that you, fact as right. Bastion Bugger. Bastion so I'm sorry about that, back. guys. So we perhaps need to go back and visit uh, Bugger at some point. That's like, cool, yeah. With his yeah. chicken. But anyway, so yeah, sorry. That's all right, man. Um, um, Randy Savage comes out to confront Crush at this point, but he's held back by Billy and Bart Gunn. These were in a dark yeah, match at the start was, of the match. Yeah. Um, after five minutes of nothing happening in the ring, like nothing whatsoever, really, um, Savage comes back out again. And Crush that, goes to attack Crush him and Crush is counted out. No. I mean, that's classic. That's yeah, quite okay. a lot. Yeah, fine. Uh, but it's just rubbish, isn't it? Uh, Luger and Undertaker have still done nothing in the match as Rick gets a, a great overhead slam on a mm. Quebec. I was actually impressed it's very amazing. much so. Luger comes in and after a quick diving elbow, puts out Jacques for a pin. Very quick. Luger nice. jumps in, proves that he's earning his paycheck yeah. and does two seconds of work. Oh, we're going to sell him like Hulk Hogan. He's, he's actually going to do nothing. Uh, Luger tags out again. Yeah. Glad that the main event star didn't do out. Yeah. Steiner suplexes Borger off the top rope. Scott Steiner, man, really carries yeah. a lot of this match. He He's really un- does. You know what? I spent a lot of time bashing him as a performer, to be honest, these days particularly. But back at this time, he was great. He's incredible work. He was man. great. He's great. And you know what? I mean, he's, I mean, he's, I think he's he's just finishing up his run in TNA, but he's still going. You know, people see something in mm. him. Mm. People mm. see something in him. You know, the genetic freak. Mm. Which, you know, the uh, big big, big, pump. big bad booty. Uh, the big oh, the big bad. We say booty, bottom daddy, the big <laughs> bad bottom fine. daddy, I suppose. That's uh, I mean. So, yeah, Jacques Ozuna comes in and pins Steiner, which is a real shame because he was sort yeah. of trying to carry the match at this point. Uh, yeah, Luger versus Yokozuna again because the SummerSlam match was so Exciting. good. Motivating. Uh, Yokozuna misses a splash uh, for Luger to get an advantage but it's quickly stopped it's when Luger goes for a tag on The Undertaker that the crowd the, the whole yeah. match gets yeah. a little bit exciting for a few seconds yeah. um, it's the biggest reaction of the night and you can see why WWF at this point knew that doing a feud were, between these yeah, two was the right flip. way to go they were about to flip the switch on this yeah Undertaker goes for a running DDT on Yokozuna Yokozuna sold the hell out yes. of this man like yes. off his feet and to see a guy like that off his feet um he had like i say some brilliant moments oh he does he, it was great and that looks amazing mm-hmm. uh, yokozuna gets a belly to belly and undertaker sits up and yokozuna again great job of selling that fear and yep. uh, you know that you need to have with people, the undertaker uh, if uh, not it don't work people man. still do it. I, look, I, I bet it's a, i bet people look at it as a privilege now you know, and then when they get to sell the fear, I love it. Oh like yeah, people. Well, like John except, Cena at except, WrestleMania, yeah, like except for Brock Lesnar. I mean, that was I mean that was still pretty funny. There's yeah. memes of that, you know, when he starts yeah, laughing. Yeah, when he starts too. laughing. Yeah. yeah, but even like John Cena, like I know the match at WrestleMania wasn't like out to talk about particularly, but that moment where he he's run, he's doing the five knuckle shuckful and he goes to the back of the rope and then comes up and Undertaker sit up and John Cena goes whoa, you know, and it all. Oh, I always bring it back. Whenever I see that, I always bring it back to Kamala, man. And SummerSlam yeah. 92 with that look that Kamala... We should, find a gif, we should find a gif of that. And post oh, it's it. great, I'll man. do that. I'll, I'll do, do that. it, man. Yeah, do, do it, it today, yeah. Uh, yeah, the short amount of time these are in the ring is probably the most exciting of the evening. So Yokozuna goes up for a massive tea bag, um, or Banzai Drop, if you'd rather call it that, but I much prefer massive tea bag. Hmm. Um, gets the Undertaker no one kicks out of a, a, a tea bag but he doesn't go for the pin he goes for a second one goes down and Undertaker sits up at the last minute sits up really quickly it was a really nice yeah. spot that could have gone really wrong uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah great they both end up out of the ring at this point and they're attacking each other and are both counted out yeah. in the in the sort of it's, it's about a minute and a half and it's the most exciting part yeah, of the night it can't that. save the match but because it feels like its own thing. It doesn't feel like it's related to the match whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And the count out would mean it's the start of the feud between these two, so I'm fine with that. That's all good. Yep, nice. Um, a double clothesline then from Ludwig uh, and Luger lays them both for the count out. Fuji passes Ludwig a bucket. Ludwig uses it to hit Luger, but Luger hulks up. What do we call a Luger hulk up, dude? A bitch wobble. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a bitch <laughs> oh, you'll so have to well. think of a name for that one, man. Yeah, we did so well. Yeah, no, we did so well. Uh, a diving forearm from Luger puts Ludwig out for the pin. Yeah, rubbish ending. 
Um, yeah, not great. Yeah, I mean, just whatever. Then during Lex's celebration, dandruff comes from the sky, and Santa enters, and yay, it's nearly Christmas. WWE is really odd. Um, uh, yeah, that was really odd. It's Mick Foley, yeah. and he uh, I wish it, it would have been better, man. I wish it was. Yeah. Uh, what do you What do you think Luger wanted for Christmas that year? I'd say maybe a, maybe, some a, maybe a talent. championship, maybe a world championship. Yeah, in, some wrestling in this organization. Abilities. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, it's a bit harsh. He wasn't terrible, but he couldn't he couldn't carry a match, was yeah. he? You know, just he shouldn't be at the top of the card. Uh, Borger at this point was due to face Tatanka at the Royal Rumble to continue their feud. Obviously, him beating Tatanka's streak. However, he was injured and couldn't fulfil that role. He was also due to face Earthquake at WrestleMania 10. Mm. Couldn't yes. do it, which probably yep. could have been okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe all, all that could have been, yes. How many stars are you giving this pay-per-view, dude? That's that's high. I'd say one and a half star. Two stars for um, the, for the for the Yoko Undertaker and Steiner performance. Yes, cool, fair enough. Um, the with the exception of King of the Ring, 1993 is a really weak year for WWE. WrestleMania nine, SummerSlam with weirdness. Um, and I mean, this is all due to sort of the steroid trial that's going on, and then there's some awful Hulk moments during this Which year. Will, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, thankfully things had improved in 1994, so stay tuned for that. And everything the new generation. From now, everything from now, I think. Well, I don't know. I think Steady. 95 Steady. slips yeah, a bit, yeah, yeah. but I think this is a really particularly Steady. bad year. You know. And it's um, coming up. It's coming up. Best performer. Uh, Undertaker. Undertaker. Or, I, or, I or Scott give Steiner. It, Scott Steiner, that's fair enough, yeah. I, I couldn't give it to him um, because of The Undertaker because it was such a short time. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Ricky for Morton. For excitement, for excitement, I'd say, but anyway, yeah. Uh, Ricky Morton. Good shout. Who does a great job in the Rock and Roll Express. And it's a really good match. Yep. It's just the audience is yep. lackluster. Best match? Uh, oh. You see, I'd go for the Heavenly Bodies match if mm. it wasn't for the audience, and I think that has to be taken into I'm gonna go, account. You know what? I'm gonna, I'd I'm go gonna, for the first I'm match. I'm going to cause controversy. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, not, dogs. You're not, you're not, I'm going to say the dog match because it was bloody brilliant and I loved it, and, I, and it was just like being a child again when I watched it again. Our audience is going to send you death. Well, threats, they can dude. do. Send me death. No, um. no, it does. <laughs> so at least send me death threats with your faces as, cl- as clowns. Faces as clowns. Yeah, you know, just like a dog. Oh, very right. oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that'd be awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. So we'll go into our we've question. Yeah, we've got, we've got time, time for, for a quick question. Cool, I cool. think um, we had a question from Susan Renee, who has thank already you, Susan, asked us another like question. One That's of our awesome. one of our regular viewers. We do have those. Um, thank you for hey, that. If you want to get a question answered, just ask it. Let us know anything. in the comments below. Our favorite stuff like color, that. anything like that. We'll so take. Susan wrote on our Wrestle Nine review that she. Which is the Macho and Sean match would have happened. Macho Man wanted the programme. Yes, I would have loved to have seen that as well. I think, I, did Sean did Sean want it as well? I'm probably. Sure. I, I mean, there was some kind of... I, I seem to read there was, some, there was some resistance. I was watching an interview with Sean where he was like, if it would have been amazing to have had that programme. He wishes he could have been at the height of his career when Macho was at the height of his career. Mm. And that would have been sort of incredible. Yeah. The, I was watching a house show in 92 where the two faced each other. And it was great. You had the link with Sherry Martel, you yeah, know, being nice. the previous really manager nice. to match. And, and it, it could have been great. It wasn't. It's such a shame, man. Yeah. It's such a shame. There are many of those. Um, she was disapp- disappointed that Luger got the pin on Perfect, as Luger was nowhere near Henning's League. I agree completely. Um, yeah. yeah, at this point, anyway. And her, the biggest upset of the night was obviously Hogan coming back and yeah. uh, winning the title. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's re- really complimentary to all of our stuff, which is really great. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much. Like, it's great like speaking to you when you send messages and, and comment on our makes videos. It, I makes really it, appreciate it. Makes it worth it. doing, you know? Um, and she says that the questions are a good way to get to know your viewers and I agree man like send us your questions we want to hear anything, from you anything, you know? we'll, anything. Take, we'll take anything you mean silly ones um, yeah so Susan's question I'm going to break it into two parts but this is the question for today's episode is top five wrestlers in WWE at the moment do you want to go first uh, or shall I you go first oh hard we, I ain't really even, I ain't done it actually alright 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 okay alright I'll, I'll, I'll have a go off the top of my head Dolph Ziggler um Dolph Ziggler, right, okay. Oh, well, Dolph I'm, I'm Ziggler. glad you went first because your list is so going to help me with my list. Yeah, so we so we got Dolph Ziggler, we got Shinsuke, we got AJ, we've got... Um, I 
man, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go nuts on this one. You're gonna uh, go bra- in, t- in go terms of in terms of oh, stuff I'm enjoying. Yeah, but that's personal taste. Bray Wyatt and Mahardy, but but is that is that individual or are you putting are you actually putting Bray? Do you think Bray's doing enough? No, for that? no, that's just my personal taste. But if I was gonna put performers in that I think are gonna break out, Chad Gable, really big fan of Chad Gable and what he's and what he's going to do, and um, I, th- I mean obviously you got to say Daniel Bryan as well. He's a great performer. He's doing very well right now. Um, breakout stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna say Chad Gable. He's gonna do some amazing things. Over Jason Jordan, I think, um, in the future. Although Jason Jordan will do well in his own right. Um, and yeah, I'm just trying, going to try and think of one more kind of left field pick of of, of a guy that I think is going to be going to do some fantastic stuff. Um, oh yeah, we include in NXT. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, obviously you got mm. like Arsa Black there, Velveteen Dream. Yeah, actually, yeah, if you include NXT, that opens it up. Really. Gargano? Yeah, Gargano. Okay, so yeah, if we're including NXT, I've got an easy list. Gargano, Ziggler, um, Styles, obviously. Shinsuke, just because his heel work is exceptional. Uh, Chad Gable, and um, that's four. Who else have I said? I think you've said enough. I'm sure at some point you can pick one of the many that you've said. Oh, I know, Champa. Love him as a heel. Champa, man. Champa is great. Champa is a heel, yep. Champa is great. Um, you've not got any from NXT. Yes, I have. Uh, I'd go Gargano, yeah. Gargano is amazing. Like The NXT matches that he's been putting on have been Belt phenomenal. Um, Sorry, I'm just adding one. No, that's all right. So I just adding so so Dom's list isn't five, it's actually three hundred. Um in fact he just likes six. He just likes six. Do you like heavy machinery? No. And they're not, not in your top. No, five? no, I'm not saying they're not a great performers. Here we go. Just, what? <laughs> Here we go. I'm not saying they're not great performers, man. <laughs> I couldn't move like them. You know, yeah, I no, 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 I, I, I like them. I just the first name that said. Because he was naming everyone, so I thought you might as well name. Sure. Right, um, <laughs> so top five, I'm gonna say Shinsuke. I love Shinsuke. I love his work he's as a, as a, a heel, he's heel as a face. I think he's amazing. I think his NXT run was amazing, he's and he fa- was the first wrestler when I was getting into wrestling two years ago, and he was introduced at WrestleMania Takeover NXT yeah. with Sami Zayn. I can't remember what place it was. Uh, yes, with Sami Zayn. Like that match, just was what really yeah. brought me back to wrestling. So, um, loving Shinsuke. Finn Balor, I think he's great. I love his in-ring work. I love his style. I can't wait for the demon thing to come back, and it excites me. Yep. Um, Gargano yes. puts on incredible yes. matches, man. Yes. Two of the best this year. Um, apart from that ladder match as well. I love that ladder match from NXT. NXT is amazing. I do yeah. love NXT. Um so I'm really excited for every Gargano match. AJ Styles, like, you can't fault him as a yep. performer. Exciting. Yep. Uh, his Shinsuke stuff hasn't le- lived up to the potential that it should have done. I don't know where what's going wrong. The two have great chemistry. There was great at Wrestle Kingdom. I think it's a different, I think it's a different, it's a different setting. It's a different setting, different rules, different, different. Uh, you know, different guidelines, I guess. But I love AJ, and yeah. and he and he does put on great work in the ring. And if he can make someone like Roman Reigns look good, I mean, wow. Yep. Okay. Um, and Braun, I think there's a reason that he is so over, and I think it's because he's been doing wonderful work both on the mic, uh, on his figure, on uh, everything that they've done with him. I think he's a complete beast at the minute, and I'm really excited to see where the company would go with Braun as a potential pop top guy. And I okay. think that would be a great shout at the yeah, minute. Yeah, I agree with those. So that's my cool. list of five people. Cool. Not, not 300. Well, no, six. I'll, man, if I had to, I'd replace Velveteen. I'd replace, replace Champa with Velveteen Dream. Would you not replace and maybe I'd Ziggler re- with... No, and no. maybe I'd replace Chad Gable with Champa. Cool. Susan, thank you for your question. You're going to cause as many arguments over many nights now <laughs> as we go on 2K18 and try and determine who is the best of all time. Um, thank you very much for watching. You have been awesome. We have been... Give me a whole year. The... Thank you, gay lords. Thank you, keep gay lords. Keep it gay. <laughs> gay lords. <laughs>